Susan Wangari's been searching for her son, Emmanuel, for more than a month. She says he went to work in central Nairobi on the 25th of June, the day tens of thousands of mostly young people protested in about 50 towns and cities. Emmanuel's sister told us he joined, and this is him. They haven't seen him since. You know others have buried their sons. It is better those who are buried. Me, I have not buried. I am always in pain. Demonstrations started against a finance bill that would have raised taxes. They spread across the country amid growing calls to end corruption and for President William Ruto to resign. The day that Emmanuel disappeared, protesters entered parliament. Police killed dozens of them. Since then, hundreds of people have been arrested and dozens of others have disappeared or been abducted by men in plain clothes. Many of them say they were beaten, interrogated and then released. But several people are still missing, and others, like Franklin Ondwari, have been found dead. His body was found in a public toilet. An autopsy revealed he was strangled. That President Ruto's promised government reforms and justice for those killed. If there is any Kenyan who has disappeared, I want people to step forward and say, Kenyan so-and-so has disappeared. I would be very happy to deal with it. Campaigners say his actions don't match his words. Almost every day, families come here to the city mortuary to look for loved ones. Rights groups say police bring bodies and submit reports that don't add up. Please don't comment on the abductions. They deny extrajudicial killings. What the police are doing through the orders of the executive is violating those constitutional rights. And we cannot accept to live in this kinds of environment where merely exercising a right leads to someone being killed. Any justice will be too late for university student Denzel Amondi. His body was found floating in a disused quarry days after he attended a protest. Asking where that my son is. Others, like Susan, just want answers. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Nairobi. And in that report, you would have seen Khalid Hussein, who joins us now, is executive director of Vocal Africa, a pan-African human rights organisation. Good to have you with us from Nairobi, sir. Uh, obviously, you've been investigating, you're compiling your reports. How are you actually managing to do that accurately? Uh, we're working with partners across the country. We have uh, community organisations that are spread uh, all over within the communities, within the cities. And together we form a network that then uh, comes up with uh, these exact numbers that uh, we have witnessed across the country. So it's a concerted effort. It's uh, several groups in different parts of the country working together to ensure we get the right statistics that we then forward to the authorities. And just for clarification for our international viewers, who are these people that have disappeared? Are they activists, civil society members, or just ordinary members of the public? Majority of them are individuals who are actively involved, particularly in the social media platforms, to agitate for change in the country. These are individuals who are calling people to come out, who are calling people uh, to share their concerns, to share their grievances with the government. These are individuals who are asking others not to remain silent. So you'll find that, uh, you know, they're either involved in the protests or they're protesting online. And, uh, you know, when they disappear, some of them come back and some of them are found dead, like uh, Danzel, as you've seen in the report. Um, you say you're working with partners uh, across the country, uh, but are you finding that the disappearances are more concentrated in the urban areas rather than the rural areas? Definitely, because it is in the urban areas where the protests are usually much larger, uh, they're more felt and uh, we have hundreds of thousands participating. Of course, we still have protests in rural areas, uh, but not as uh, detailed as those in the cities. So that then explains why we have more appearing in urban centers, but we also have people who are disappearing in the rural areas. And uh, as you know, uh, in Africa, in Kenya, also um, um, 
mobile network, particularly social media, is more active in the cities than in the rural areas. Is there a case to be perhaps answered that you have approached the authorities and asked them for help or information? What sort of conversations have you and your partner groups had with the authorities about locating the missing? Yeah. There are many cases um, that, that we have presented to the authorities. It's all over. And it's really absurd to hear the president saying if there are uh, missing persons. It's not a, a question of if. It's out there. It's public. It's information. It's wrong for the government to play you know, public relations when they know for a fact that there are people who've disappeared. It's in the media. It's all over. And, uh, you know, not only is this, uh, you know, a slap in the face of Kenyans, but it's also uh, adding salt to injury when authorities come out, particularly the president, saying if there are people who have disappeared, when we know there are tens, you know, out there who have disappeared. I mean, we've seen and reported on a number of cases where bodies have been found weeks after they went missing in various parts of Nairobi, for example. The police and security services are often accused of extrajudicial killings. How will you find recourse if the very authorities that you're appealing to for help, you might say, are also under suspicion? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. And that's why this week uh, we went to the Civilian Policing Oversight Authority, IPOA, and we presented 13 families whose kin had either been shot dead, according to the postmortem reports, or uh, killed through blunt force trauma, which would most likely uh, allude to police battery. And, uh, you know, we said that we, have don't, we don't have faith in the police because the accused persons here, the suspects are the police, and you can't have the police investigating the police. So that's why we went to the Civilian Oversight Authority that is mandated by law to investigate police excesses. And in these cases, we are saying there was uh, excessive force that was used, and these individuals were killed extrajudicially, and that's why we are demanding justice for our fallen comrades. For the moment, we'll leave it there. Khalid Hussein uh, from Vocal Africa, thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.